Thank you. Well, thank you, Stephen. It's not Steve. Is it not Stephen Curry? Or is it Stephen Curry. Stephen. Different spelling. All right, thank you. Yeah, my name is Eric Postumus. I uh, I did come straight from work tonight. I do have a little cheat sheet in my left hand, but I don't think I'll need it. Hopefully, I won't. Um, on my way here today, I uh, I saw a guy on the street with a sign that said, "Homeless, please help." And uh, you know, I was happy to oblige. So I reached into my backpack and I pulled out a marker and I crossed out the word homeless and replaced it with the word unhoused. And I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, you're welcome. And once I checked his privilege, I, I gave him three bucks. But I can actually tell that joke, it's fine, because I, I myself was unhoused for much of the last year. I lived in a, a, a red roof in out in Deerfield. Nobody, but has anyone put, stayed in the red roof in before? Congratulations, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my neighbors actually were uh, two twin brothers from Inglewood, Juju and Rich. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, Juju, uh, Rich was a general of the Black Keystones in Inglewood. And his twin brother, uh, Rich, uh, and then not, not just those two, but also uh, Rich's girlfriend, Asia, who was probably about 17 and pregnant, a miniature dachshund named Rocco, and the cutest little black toddler you've ever seen named Armaeus. And I asked them one day, I'm like, well, if you don't mind me asking, you know, why are you taking care of your uh, your sister's kid? And they both looked at me at the same time and said, is she a hoe? And I said, no further questions. And that's how that went. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go to my cheat sheet. I, uh, I think these plus size models, we have a lot of plus size models these days, I think they're really onto something because um, I too demand to be considered hot. You know? I feel like there's, there's not a lot of male plus size models out there. I feel like the uh, the male version of the plus size model is, to me, is, is the statue of David. You know, the statue of David, like Angelo? I feel like whenever I see that, I'm like, I can compete with that, you know? Not, not the body, of course. But the, uh, you know, it's like that. It's art. Uh, during the Me Too movement, I saw a lot of, uh, of headlines, uh, you know, it was, it, it was an important thing for, to happen, you know, for sure. But I saw a lot of articles that uh, were interviews with feminists and, you know, women's rights advocates, and they were saying that no one who's under the influence of alcohol can give consent to you. It's impossible to give consent while you're intoxicated. And I, and I put some thought into that, and I realized that I don't know whether I've raped more women than I've been raped by. I think it's like if you're over 51% and you're the, the victim, I don't know. A lot of them were ties. I don't know if that cancels out or what. Um, so uh, when I was growing up, uh, one of the uh, I played a lot of high school sports, and when I was growing up, a kid at one of our neighboring high schools dropped dead on the basketball court. He, he died playing basketball, and, uh, uh, and the reason for his death, death was an enlarged heart. It's actually, it, uh, it's actually the most common cause of death among high school athletes. And uh, the next week, you know, the, the team the team decided to play their next game in his honor. And they won. And after the game, the coach was giving an interview with the paper, and he was choking up, and he said, these kids, they used to have the biggest hearts. <laughs> Dude, shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was over at my mom's house on Mother's Day. Have you ever been in a situation where you, someone else tells you something that you did, but you don't remember it? Like, uh, yeah, last, night. last night, right? Yeah, sometimes it's because you're blacked out, and sometimes it's for other reasons. But, but with the black, so one time, I'll give you a little small example. I was uh, in college. <laughs> when I was in college, uh, I, I ran into my buddy, Eric Jernick, after... Uh, and he said, I haven't seen you since Michigan State when we were tailgating. He said, uh, you, you were swinging a bag of, of uh, a plastic grocery bag with five natural light cans in there, full, full beers. I was swinging it around like a softball pitcher, and the bottom of the bag gave out and just sh shot into this woman's, and hit her right in the fucking shit. Five, five natural lights, just boom, 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 boom. I do vaguely remember that, but what I don't remember was uh, what I did afterwards, and this is what he told me. He said, I walked over to her, put my arm around her, and said, Ma'am, you look perturbed. And I walked away. I was like, thank you very much for telling me that. That's fucking, I'm so glad I had that memory now. Now, sometimes it goes the other way. Like I was at my mom's house on Mother's Day, 
and she was telling me how when I was 13 years old, I got us booted off of AOL, the original uh, internet provider. Because, uh, yeah, my, my AOL screen name was Ulick Bees, the letter U L I C K D E E S. Yes, yes, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, she's like, yeah, you got us booted off of AOL like, within two weeks of getting it. I'm like, what? Really? What happened? She's like, well, you and your friends went into a Native American chat room and started typing shit like, nice how you live in TTs and we wipe our ass with it. I was like, oh my god. Then also the one that uh, one that got took off was uh, my buddy Jeff typed. No, seriously, I have a little bit of Indian blood on my knife. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my god, uh, what the fuck do I say to that? It's uh, good for, I guess, I, I outgrew that stage. Thank God. All right, I got one minute left here. Uh, I will, uh, I'll tell you that, I want to talk about the happiest place on earth. Does anybody know what the happiest place on earth is? Disneyland. Oh, it's not Disneyland. No. NASCAR. It's the opening ceremonies of the Special Olympics. I don't know if anyone's ever watched the opening ceremonies of the Special Olympics before. But uh, the last year, I, I saw the uh, the New Zealanders came out. Just 24 dudes with Down syndrome came out of the tunnel at the opening ceremonies and started doing the uh, the Maori tribesmen war dance, where they're like, then I thought about. Uh, no, that's fine. Then I thought about how uh, the Mongolian team would feel. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the old term for, Mongo for Down syndrome was Mongolian idiocy. That was a technical term. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah like some German guy that figured out that you have to keep 21st chromosomes. It's funny. I know. I know, we don't feel that. But like, but I was thinking to myself, if someone at the, if someone at the Special Olympics like re referred to someone with Down syndrome as, as a Mongoloid, and they're, like someone was like, you can't say that, that's offensive. But like, the people from Mongolia would be like, Offensive to who? What the fuck are we talking about here? <laughs> anyway, I feel like if you're a Mongolian with Mongo a Mongolian mongoloid, it's like, do you have double Down syndrome? It's like, uh, how do you get me? How do you get 21 twice without splitting? It's just like your chromosomes. All right, thank you very much.